Hi and welcome to the third part of the vacuum tube Tesla coil build. Today I'll be troubleshooting this thing, hence why you see so many wires running around on the floor and my oscilloscope over there. I'm powering this thing through a step down transformer into the normal setup, measuring the voltage on the on the input, then taking the waveform from the diode rectifier. That's the bottom waveform, if you can even see it through the backlight. Well, yeah, there's a waveform over here, that's the rectified voltage. And this voltage is the voltage on the grid resistor. I do not know why it's fluctuating like this. It's about 2 volts. It's probably noise. Not sure, really. But when I turn out the power slowly, you can start seeing some stuff is happening. Well, this voltage is doing some weird fluctuations over here. But this, well, if we just um, put a bit more amplitude into this, yeah, as you can see, this this is now how much? One volt per division, and there's like what um, five divisions? So that's five volts. The input voltage is fifty, or no? The input voltage is thirty. Oh, well, forty volts. Uh, I mean the voltage on the diodes, let's just see, uh, the voltage on the diodes, 20 volts per division, alright, that, well that's a little more than I estimated, that's 80 volts, um, oh yeah, because there's the doubler, forgot about that part, <laughs> that little detail, this is the voltage I'm measuring, I could see the grid voltage soon, because well, this is what this is all for, I will be measuring every voltage I can to see if there's anything wrong. Now, I have a suspicion that this resistor didn't normally fail like, uh, doesn't, didn't normally like like this. It was standing upright. And I have a suspicion while this coil, why this coil failed. That's because this resistor was standing up right underneath the primary. And these resistors are wire wound, which means they are basically coils. This one has, for example, I think like what, 2 millihenries of inductance. That means this coil induced voltage in this resistor because it was standing in a, in a way that allowed that to happen. In most designs you see resistors laying like this. So now I'll put the resistor upright and I will see what that changes with the waveform. So now as you can see the resistor is standing upright and uh, well, I have some disappointing news because the waveform is exactly the same. At the same input voltage, the waveform looks perfectly the same. Let's look at the power waveform. Well, that doesn't look different either. Alright, just for reference, this is the voltage with it lying on its side once again. And this is the voltage of the power supply with it. This is the resistor lying on the other side. As you can see, the voltage is the same and the power voltage is also the same. And just for kicks, I decided to measure the anode voltage and this seems to be the waveform it gives me. That's at 20 volts per division. Input voltage is about... Let me just power that thing back on. Um, well, something like uh, 60 volts, I think. Yeah. So, now I'm measuring the voltage on the grids of the tube and the voltage on the resistor. The voltage on the resistor is on the bottom and the voltage on the grids is on the top. As you can see, it's uh, yeah, it, it's doing something. That's at 2 volts per division both and the grounds look like this. Yeah, so the resistor voltage is definitely underneath the zero and this voltage is not. This is not, this is the S. <laughs> Once again, I will be comparing the two voltages. These are the voltages when the resistor is laying on the ground, and these are the same voltages with the resistor sitting up right. Well, that seems pretty much the same to me. For a break from the boring measurements, let's upgrade some of the parts of this coil. Alright, so these are the two transformers that are used as the power supply for this coil. As you can see, the way they are currently connected is with this little copper tab that I cut out of a breaker connector. 
And now I have a much better solution, which is this big copper plate. It's pretty much perfect the size, as you can see. It's uh, really just the case of putting them on, drilling all the holes, you know, and they will have a perfect electrical connection. And also they will be a, a lot more sturdy because, well, at the moment the solution isn't perfect. As you can see it, uh, well, yeah, they can move a lot. And I also redesigned this to take up less space so the transformers and the capacitors take up well as much space as there's just the transformers so there hasn't this doesn't need to be this big gap here as you can see this is just a little bakelite table bakelite because I wanted something that will insulate it and I also these MLTs are now on a single copper plate so they are pretty solidly mounted together I've properly sanded the bottom of this uh, plate and the bottoms of these transformers so now the contact is really robust. Alright, so as you can see I drilled the holes and secured it with zip ties. It bent a little bit under the pressure of the zip ties but it's fine. So this is really neat. You can see the spacing here. Shouldn't be any arcs. Well, these are floating so I guess it won't be a problem. Yeah, this looks really neat, so I'll put it back together. Since I'm on a roll, I decided I might as well res uh, redesign this um, rectifier for the coil, which includes these caps. It'll look like this. So these are the uh, diodes in this orientation, and the capacitors will be like this, and it will all be on this new copper bar. So let's do this. Right, so I've cut the holes in this this is pretty pretty straight straight enough and these will sit like somewhere like this okay. I'll cut it here and the capacitors will sit here something like this all right let's let's get going I screwed it in the bottom part is all done as you can see it's pretty neat kept clearance here here these two screw in pretty nice Top part I also put in, but as you can see, the clearance here is really tiny, so I'm gonna have to bend it up, bend it up, and rot it over here, something like this. So I'm gonna do that now. So after filing it in for a little while, all of the copper now fits perfectly. As you can see, this covers the whole bottom of the diode. This pretty much too. Yeah, I gotta kind of finish up this this uh, whole copper rails just polish them up or something so they look pretty nice but uh, yeah it's electrically it's complete it's it's looking very nice <laughs> all right so as you can see I've set it up all up once again this is this uh, the, the the circuit with uh, the new internals and now I'll be measuring for higher voltages I'm planning to make the the voltage take up the whole screen and stop there because well after that how do I measure it yeah <laughs> So I will take the best measurements I can with this setup. So let's get to it. I gotta be careful because this thing is running hot at 25.3 volts. This is the waveform as you can see. I hope the camera shows it. Um, let's give it a good... Uh, yeah. So this is how it looks. It's 20 volts per division. This is the grid voltage. And this thing ain't throwing no sparks yet. But this is, this is the waveform. So I'm gonna... I change some the position of the resistor and remeasure this. I'm very sad to say, but even with the resistor standing up in both positions, still 25 volts, the waveform looks exactly the same. Wait a minute. Let me just give it this. Yeah, looks looks pretty much identical. So from all the measurements I took, I made this file with uh, plots and everything, so now let's look at it. This is the uh, file I composed, uh, it's written in Polish, but as you can see, here we have the resistor lying on its side, resistor lying uh, standing one way and then the other. These two don't differ too much, but over here you can see that something's clearly happening. The first value is bigger, and then this one is bigger, this one is bigger by far, 4 volts. So. This one is bigger by approximately five. It's difficult to measure precisely 
when we are up on like these high voltages uh, well relatively high but 165 volts is pretty big to me um, this is the primary voltage percentage of the maximum anode voltage I actually made a mistake in this formula it should be multiplied by two so just keep in mind this is twice as big as it is <laughs> and this is the grid voltage that I measured uh, with my scope peak to peak um, and this is the uh, this is the percentage of the maximum voltage which is depicted here 600 volts this is the maximum anode voltage and this is the multiplier from the transformer to the uh, secondary of the transformer um, and yeah as you can see here we don't see any difference because there is none and over here we start seeing the rise this this these seem to be kind of slowing down significantly this one also is slowing down but less significantly and it's uh, overall a little bit higher so i think there's something here it's not as big as i thought i thought it would be like huge and i would clearly just be able to say oh shit look at this this is clearly the reason why something broke because this is growing like twice as fast no it's well it's it's a subtle difference but it's there so i'm thinking of putting together a 10 times probe with which i will be able to like pull 50 volts here for example and see what that gives me because then i think these will differ even more you know we might see that this will differ not by 5 volts but 25 and then the uh the difference of these two will show us like a thing that's uh, 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 <laughs> rising really quickly. Uh, I hope that's what I'll get because that will prove my theory and uh, make me sleep better at night. Uh, so I will see what I can do about that probe and measuring it. I don't know if I'll do it anytime soon, so <laughs> I might just put this up as a separate episode or not. Not sure. Anyway, uh, this is the measurement results. Uh, yeah less less um, impacting well, less impactful less surprising than I thought all right so thanks for watching this would be it for this episode of the vacuum tube Tesla coil build I'm sorry if it was a bit more boring than previous ones but uh, yeah I had to get all these measurements out of the way these were very important and some upgrades that also make me feel more confident about this whole thing <laughs> It's kind of starting to remind me of the marble machine uh, in the way that I'm chasing some perfection uh, which isn't really all that important but yeah uh, I think maybe next episode we'll get to power this thing fully and then we will uh, yeah we will see the potential in this thing hopefully hopefully no explosion so yeah bye thanks for watching have a nice day <laughs>